I'm Umberto Bon Cristiani, and this is Inside the Hive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. If you like bees and want to know more about them, please check our videos. And if you like them, please consider to subscribe and also hit the bell button so you don't miss a single video. It is the time of the year when all the bee people, researchers, beekeepers, environmentalists, media and anybody else concerned about bees and the environment get together to look at the release of BIP, Bee Informed Partnership Honeybee Colony Losses Report. And because this is a very hot topic, everybody wants to know how many honeybee colonies have died last year. All the media get really excited to cover the subject. Tons of articles are released and a lot of coverage is done. However, in my view, there is a disproportion happening here that we need to address. Too much cover on the losses and very little on the gains. Problem is that this disproportion creates some confusion when people constantly come to me and ask, how can we have so many losses and at the same time the bees not only in US but all over the world is growing in total numbers? BIP, the Bee Informed Partnership. BIP is a collaboration of effort from some of the leading research labs and universities to better understand honeybee decline in the United States. It was supported initially by the United States Department of Agriculture and the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, but now they become a non-for-profit organization. So what they do, basically, today they do a lot, but basically uh, every year BIP collect data from thousands of beekeepers across the country regarding their losses and beekeeping practices to later on Using statistics, they find correlations that could point out where the problems are. In the last release, uh, about a week ago or so, uh, it shows that during 2018-2019 winter, in the wave of winter, uh, an estimate of 37.7% of the managed honeybee colonies in the United States were lost. Pretty high. The loss represents an increase of 7% points compared with the last year. And an increase of almost 9% points compared with 13 years average of winter colony losses, which is 28.8%. This year's estimate is the highest level of winter losses reported since they start the survey in 2006. Pretty bad, huh, right? Well, at the same time, the USDA numbers in the last 12 years shows that honeybee colonies have grown around 17%. So how that's possible? What's happening here? Before we start with all the conspiracy theories about the government and blah blah blah, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how a beekeeping operation works. So a good beekeeper with the right knowledge and resources, habitat, supplies, new queens, they can double the number of hives every six weeks in their operation. For those that doesn't know bees too much, it works like that. A beekeeper stimulates the growth of the colony, providing the right resources at the right time. And then when the colony reaches some kind of strength, they split the colony in two, a process that we call splitting. The two new colonies are gonna receive new queens and the process start over again. You re-stimulate growth again and etc. Therefore, at the end of one full year, uh, in the right conditions, the beekeeper can potentially increase their operation 10 times. So, uh, just an example. Let's imagine uh, hypothetically that in 2010, a beekeeper initially with 100 hives have losses of 30%. He will start 2011 with 70 hives. He makes the decision that he's gonna invest a lot and go to try to, uh, to increase 10 times. He will end up in that year with 700 hives. But let's imagine that in that same year, he has the loss of 50%, big loss. So he will end up with 350 hives in that year. And then, boom, here we go. Now you know what we have here. In the same year that he has the biggest loss, 50%, he end up with 250 hives more than the previous year. The number of losses is an important measure 
of damage in beekeeping industry, but taking it alone without the gaining number, uh, it's kind of incomplete. Bee Penual surveys work as a monitoring system. The same way when you go to an emergency room and they put a monitor system in your finger to measure some of the, your metrics, uh, some metrics of your health condition. That's all. Bee Colony Losses Report is an indication of a possible problem. And the spikes that go beyond average must be investigated carefully. Could be something new and relevant about the health conditions of the bees in the United States happening? Yes, maybe. Or perhaps it was just a bad year. Let's see what Bip have to say about this whole thing. Colony uh, losses on the winter. How people need to look at those numbers and what they can get from those numbers. So looking at the number, um, uh, the rate of colony loss over the winter is actually uh, what is really interesting about it is to look at it over time. And so we have been doing this survey for over 13 years now. And so we can see that um, we are losing on average about, you know, 35, 38% of the colonies um, uh, on average every winter. So some winters are worse, some winters are better. Um, so it fluctuates between good and bad years, but overall of the, the 13 years that we have been surveying, the U.S. beekeepers, um, we see about 38% of colony that are lost every winter. Um, and so this is basically keeping a pulse on, on the, uh, the, uh, the health of those colonies in the country. Um, we think that there are a lot of factors involved. But uh, looking at it every year allows us to see if the situation you know, gets better or get, or get worse. Um, so basically we have a baseline that then we can compare um, you know, the specific risks to. It's important to know what the normal rate of mortality is so that we can identify, for example, zones that are at higher risk than others. So there are some myths uh, that try to dismystify here. Uh, People try to see, because there is a lot of coverage uh, on the media about these numbers and all this that create perhaps a illusion that the bees are suffering something that we don't know about, something very mysterious and they're dying and, and the world's going to end, that kind of thing. Uh, I have that feeling. I have a lot of people that come to me with the same uh, impression. And I don't think that's the way to look at what BIP is doing. So BIP is a kind of monitoring if something, like you said, a post, if something go out of normal, it's something that you can go back to your big data set that your guys are accumulating for many years and try to correlate that with some patterns that you can find in beekeeping operations, how beekeepers are uh, uh, doing their operation, how they feed, how they take care of their bees. Is, is that a good uh, assessment? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea that, um, you know, 30% or, you know, 38% winter loss um, will lead to a reduction in the total population of bees is actually false. So we actually are not seeing a decline in the total number of honeybees in the country. To the contrary, actually, we, we have seen in the last 20 years, uh, and that is actually based on USDA uh, estimates on the number of, of colonies producing honey. Uh, which is something that they're, they're looking at uh, every year. We have seen though, that total number of colonies in the country relatively stable, if not increasing slightly over the last 20 years. Um, so we, we, this number of colonies um, is stable because um, beekeeper can recover their losses by making splits. So this is a, a kind of a, a, a boost to the natality rate of colonies. Um, beekeepers can manage the natality rate of their colonies by deciding when to make splits. And that means that when they're losing colonies, they're likely going to make more splits uh, either before the winter or after the winter to make sure that they can recover from their losses that they're actually starting to, to expect. So beekeepers expect to lose 30% of their colonies. They're going to try to bump their number up to be able to, to recover from those losses. And so that means that the total number of, uh, of colonies in the country can stay stable despite a high turnover of colonies. We are starting to investigate maybe environmental factors. Um, we have other surveys in which we are also capturing 
um, the disease levels in colonies, such varroa levels or viruses levels. And so we are trying now to find associations between high risk and factors of risk to try to identify, well, what are the exposures? What are the factors that are driving the higher risk in certain operations? Um, and so that's always a, a work in, in progress. And there are some factors that we know are associated with higher risk. Um, and so that is kind of the same job that epidemiologists will do with human health. So when 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 epidemiologists uh, found, uh, you know, 20 years something ago, uh, that smoking was associated with increased risk uh, of cancer, uh, this is the same kind of association that we're trying to to find. We're trying to find what are the the factors that are associated with higher risk. So Natalie, uh, there is any factor that you guys found combined with this data that, that can give us beekeepers some kind of clue about how they need to improve or perform in their op own operation? Yes, well, so one thing that, um, uh, so there is a lot of factors that affect honeybee health. But one thing that we see year after year that is very clear in the data is that beekeepers who have a varroa monitoring um, and, 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 and treatment system in place lose less colonies than beekeepers who don't have a, a varroa management system. So, and that concerns both treatment, but also monitoring. So you need to um, not just um, use calendar treatments, but actually monitor varroa and then have a, 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 a treatment applied when appropriate. And those beekeepers are the ones who have uh, overall the lower risk in their operation. I have no doubt about that. I see that in Florida too. The people that have best managing practices here and really are looking for varroa control and taking care of varroa are the ones that are performing better here too. So I, I agree with that. So, all right. So thank you. Thank you, Natalie. It's always good to have you guys here. I miss, I miss Maryland, I guess. Yeah, we miss you too. You should come and visit. I will, I will. Here we go. Now you have it, direct from the source. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you very much. I think that helps a lot. I think people are going to understand better why they need to look those numbers the way it's supposed to be. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. That's it. By the way, if you come to Florida in Gainesville in August and want to know more about bees, don't miss out our bee college. It will be held in our new lab and beside all the great speakers and all the fun that you might already know, uh, this year for the first time, I will be teaching a photography class and there is a lot of expectations about that and I'm, I'm very excited about the opportunity. For more information, links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, I could clarify something a little bit more. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching InsideEye.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.